Now I'd like to begin uh, talking about uh, phenomenology. You see on page 88, uh, let me get this up on the board. School of thought called phenomenology, and there are a number of thinkers uh, in the school of thought, but uh, I'm going to focus on the most famous one, whose name is Edmund Husserl. And phenomenology, to be perfectly honest, uh, I mean, of all the philosophical schools and all the philosophical methods that uh, we're talking about in this course, I think probably phenomenology is the one that I, I understand the least. I can tell you what the phenomenologists say but I'm not sure that I understand their logic, that I understand their passion, that I understand why, what they think they're gaining from it. Uh, some people are very enthusiastic about phenomenology, uh, uh, but I, I guess I've never quite seen the point. I think when you're teaching philosophy to people, it's important that you help them to see not only what the philosopher said, but also kind of what impels him to say it, what, what he thinks he accomplishes by this. I've tried to do that with most of the other philosophers and theologians that we've talked about in this course, and I expect to do it through the remainder of the course. I, 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 I am most frustrated by phenomenology in this regard. I'm not really sure uh, what they're up to, but I, I'll tell you what the phenomenologists say that they're doing, and, the, uh, and from time to time I'll, I'll expound a little bit. The phenomenologists uh, attempt to uh, provide fundamental descriptions, free from distortion by theoretical presuppositions and prejudices, of things themselves or of phenomena. That's a quote from a book. Uh, uh, by uh, Cooper uh, that uh, deals with this. Um, and in empiricism, remember empiricists say that uh, knowledge comes through sense experience. Uh, em empiricists uh, go about trying to uh, ha have this kind of view. They, they have the thought that uh, uh, there's reality out there Here's my mind here. And uh, there's a kind of uh, mediator between the mind and reality. The mediator is the sense datum, what my eyes see and perhaps record in the brain. There's the sense image. There's the sense datum. And many empiricists have thought that I don't really perceive the world out there all I perceive are my sense data, and that uh, from my sense data I deduce the world out there. I think there must be a world out there if I'm having these sense data. So the sense datum as a mediator between the mind and reality. Now, that, that's caused a lot of problems, of course. Uh, the, this picture of the sense datum as a mediator. Uh, Barclay, you remember, uh, uh, took on this analysis and he said, well, yeah, we have these sense data, but I don't know if there's anything outside the sense data. I don't know if there's anything that the sense data point to. Uh, all, I, uh, all I know are my sense data. I don't know anything about the world beyond my sense data. So therefore, all I know are my own perceptions. All I know is this picture of the world that we have, and the picture might be accurate or it might not be. So empiricists have used this idea that, that our thoughts, our concepts, our ideas are pictures of reality. And they, they, they reveal the world out there, but in a way they, they're a barrier. Uh, they keep us from knowing the world out there. I had a friend who, who wrote to me about phenomenology, and he says the, the main difference between phenomenology and empiricism is this, that the, for the phenomenologist, the sense data, the perceptions, the, the mental experiences I have, those are not a 
picture of reality. Those are the re those are a window to reality. Uh, these are the way I see reality. Uh, they are not a barrier. When I look at my ideas, my thoughts, my mental experiences, that is reality. I'm really seeing it there. Now, uh, a little bit of terminology. A phenomenon is anything with which the subject is confronted, including my own thoughts, okay? Without any suggestion that the phenomenon is, as Kant supposed, a mere appearance of a basic reality. Now, Kant uh, said that the, the phenomena are the world as it appears to us, but not necessarily the real world. The phenomenologist reverses Kant. The phenomenologist denies what Kant says. Kant says that phenomena, the world as it appears to us, is just the appearance of something more basic than noumenal. Phenomenologist says, no, there's nothing more basic than phenomena. To know the world is to know the phenomenon. For Husserl, the phenomenon is what is given to consciousness. Uh, it includes the mental act itself. Uh, that I'm thinking, or that I'm doubting, or that I'm imagining. And, uh, of course, I can't doubt that I'm doubting. I can't doubt that I'm thinking. Descartes was right about that. I can't doubt that this mental act is taking place. But when I have a mental act, there's always something more going on, because every mental concept is a concept of something. All right? When I have a mental... A concept of the tree out there it's not just a concept it's a concept of the tree the tree is in a way a part of the concept so that when I'm experiencing the concept when I'm experiencing the sense data when I'm experiencing the work of my mind I'm experiencing the reality at the same time so notice that opposite to Kant Husserl identifies the phenomenon with the thing in itself. See, for Kant, the phenomenon was completely uh, distinct from the thing in itself. For Husserl, the phenomenon, the world as it appears to me, is the thing in itself. There's, there's nothing else beyond the phenomenon. To know the phenomenon is to know the thing in itself. It is this with which we're most directly confronted, and therefore it is this that's directly, that, that is unquestionably real. Phenomena are not mere psychological ideas, but rather, and here's where I start to, where they start to lose me, the phenomena are rather the ideal meanings and universal relations with which the ego is confronted in its experience. So I guess what that means is that the phenomena is the reality, not just a psychological impression. I mean, some, sometimes my psychological impressions are just illusions. Sometimes they're dreams. Sometimes they're, they should be distinguished from reality. But the phenomenon, as, as Husserl speaks of it, is real. It's the real world. It's what I'm trying to know. Now, what method do we pursue in trying to know the real world? Well, Husserl says, to understand the phenomena and focus on them in their purity, it is necessary to bracket or abstain from suppositions about the relations of the phenomena to a world outside them. Okay, this is, this is Kant. Kant says you've got this phenomena, and you've got the real world. You've got the noumenal out here. And then you, you can you really can't know what the relationship is between the phenomena and the real world. You just have to sort of suppose. And so he says, well, or who knows? There might be a God out there. There might be a freedom. There might be immortality. There might be all these things. So you just don't know, uh, really. Uh, you just have to, have to suppose. Husserl says, don't suppose. Okay? Husserl says, don't get caught up in wondering how the phenomenon is related to something beyond it. 
Just put that out of your mind. Uh, we all would like to speculate. We all would like to know. But just, just ignore that. Uh, and that's what he calls the, uh, uh, he, he calls it the uh, bracketing. Uh, he calls it abstaining. He calls it the epoche. He calls it the cessation from suppositions about the relations of the phenomena to a world outside them. So phenomenology resists any discussions of whether phenomena represent or reflect a reality outside themselves. Uh, Husserl calls that the transcendent. So uh, we have to get beyond the natural attitude, what Husserl calls the natural attitude, toward the contents of the mind, which leads to contradictions and other problems, to the philosophical attitude. The philosophical attitude, uh, um, well, the, the natural attitude includes that of the natural sciences, where we, we see this experiment and we say, okay, what, what is that, uh, you know, what's behind that? What, what's making that happen, you know? This is the phenomenon, okay, let's get behind that and find out the cause. That's not what the phenomenologist wants to do. Uh, phenomenologist, uh, phenomenology, therefore, is not scientific. It's not part of the scientific method. Uh, it's philosophy rather than science. In the philosophical attitude, we discern the essences of the phenomena, and that's what le yields uh, objective knowledge. So I don't know. I picture it as just you know, kind of closing your eyes and saying, "Well, what?" what what am I thinking about? And then think about it real, real hard. <laughs> and just describe it. Don't, don't, don't ask, well, where does that thought come from? Just, just try to describe your thought. If you're thinking about a cow, you know, just describe the cow. That's, that's a phenomenology. You're doing a phenomenology of the cow when you do that. I don't know. To, I mean, to put it that way seems to reduce it to triviality. <laughs> But not, I mean, when you get to more sophisticated concepts and you ask, well, what is, what is, uh, I have a friend who's a famous sociologist and he died a few years ago and he used what he called a phenomenological method and he wrote a book on humor. And so he says, well, what is humor? Let's do a phenomenology. Let's just think what, what, what's going on when we laugh at something, you know, what's that like? Um, I read the book. I, I always thought he was being kind of arbitrary. <laughs> what makes he was Jewish and I'm not, so what makes him laugh may be different from what makes me laugh. I don't know, but uh, anyway, that seems to be what it is. It's kind of really armchair philosophy. I mean, you <laughs> sort of uh, I, I accuse Thales of being an armchair philosopher. Where you just kind of sit down and say, well, what what is the world like after all? What, meaning, what does it look like to me? Uh, you know, what, uh, okay, I had breakfast this morning. What was that experience like? Well, I described my memories in minute detail. Uh, well, if that occurs to you, if that uh, appeals to you, uh, you can be a phenomenologist. 